μετά η σκούφια μου λίγο από εκεί, γιατί έχω μια οικογένεια από τις Μπενίτσες. Καλησπέρα. Είμαστε σε έναν... Good afternoon. We are in an amazing garden where under diff different circumstances I probably will be waltzing away. But this is the 2nd of June 2021. We are celebrating 50 years since a historic event. So let's waltz later. And in the meantime, let us discuss the history in the background in order for us to grasp what we're talking about. Young people will thus be able to understand the atmosphere and the ones that are older will remember. If Angelic Rembrandt was still alive at a time, so in that year, in Leiden, in his atelier, he would have painting, uh, painted another huge masterpiece that would have been acknowledged to the world over. He would have called this masterpiece Ajax or Ajax, and it would have been equally important as his night watch or the anatomy lesson of Nicholas Tull because Ajax is a work of art which thankfully managed to be admired by the world just like Rembrandt was admired. We are talking about total football and the incomparable art thereof which was unique in the history of football the world over with such an Ajax of Johann Cruyff, Nessigen's Crow, Han Huls of Vincent van Gogh would still have starry night. He would never have cut off his ear. A few thousand kilometers away uh, in Plato's Republic, we had the glorious heroes of Panathinaikos, the Panathinaikos of Domazos, Antoniadis, Camaras, a squad which made history as it made it, thanks to these 11 Greek players, to the final of the European Cup and faced off the biggest team in the world. And since everything is in moderation or all should be in good measure as Aristotle said and Rhinos Mikkel's uh, brigade was impossible to be defeated and so Panathinaikos was defeated but it was not being mourned by the Aeschylus, Sophocles, Euripides, there was no Iphigenia to be sought. Everyone would recognize the grandeur of the winner and this David and Goliath battle can't always have the same uh, outcome. Today, 50 years uh, after that legendary final match at Wembley, the truth is accurately and fully documented. Ajax or Aeas, the son of King of Telamon, gave its name to the club and there's the logo of Aeas of Telamon, the greatest uh, team. And it's time Ajax had Agamemnon as its king. And Agamemnon at that time was the incomparable Johann Cruyff, a unique preacher of the ball. Ajax managed to get three consecutive caps in 1971, 72, 73. That was a great feat for football. Ajax got faithful funds the world over. There was only a handful of teams or very few teams that managed to do that. And there's proof of the matter. Ajax actually managed to win over all of Europe, the European Cups in three consecutive rows, plus the 1972 Intercontinental Cup. So what was Ajax in 1971? It was the absolute football machine, the quintessence of uh, football that would make Archimedes call yet again Eureka. And much like uh, resourceful Ulysses, Rinus Michels understood that in order to change football as we knew it back then, what was necessary was a revolution. And so he did away with what was established back then. All the premises were, were lifted and the stereotypes of decades were done away with. He said, Michel said, let's have total football, everyone in every place. And so the legendary Ajax had artists. The players were artists playing everywhere. I will uphold is the national motto of the Dutch, the Netherlands. And so Michels imposed this impossible team and he never gave way. He never compromised his principles and values. There was, of course, the Rudolf Nureje for football back then, Johan Cruyff. He was in himself, by himself, a whole Balsoy ballet crew. We remember the great school of Ajax and the final. Stui Vasovic, Subi, Hulz of Kroll, Han, Nuren. What was Panathinaikos in 1971? The Greek Revolution. Ferenc Puskas was Kolokotronis. He imposed his doctrine. They are 11. We are 11 too. 11 Greeks who were united. That's tough for Greece, my minister. But they managed to do the impossible. They achieved the impossible. They made it into the finals. They eliminated successively, successfully uh, Zenesis of Luxembourg, Sloven, Bratislava. 
Prince, Lava Sabaton, and Red Star. And there was Mimis Domazos, the star of the team, but there was also the rest of the squad, 10 typhoon-like warriors who managed to do the impossible. You are in front of this giant, Aristides Camaras, who was 32 at the time and could show everyone else how spirit and soul can speak. 11 Greeks, Economopoulos, Tomaras, Surpis, Camaras, Vlachos, Eleftherakis, Capsis, Domasos, Filakouris, Gramos, Antoniades, they all heard people say they would be crushed by Ajax. And although Ajax indeed took the lead in the fifth minute uh, after a Van Dijk goal, they managed to strike a balance. They were heroic in their play and they were decent until they fell in the 18th minute after a known goal by Capsis who was 20 years back then. And as Daily Mail wrote, Ajax was right to climb up at the top of Europe, but the exceptional Panathinaikos is the one that will stick in our memory. That was a night when 100,000 people saw the new soccer king, Ajax. That was a night when Panathinaikos became Panathinaikos. It became known abroad. There was a change in its DNA history. And people, of course, bow with respect before the people who changed the fate and the destiny of their own squads and entered them into the Libro d'Or of the European soccer. We do remember, and this mellows our souls. And glory be to these lads, as the great Greek Nikos Kazantzakis said, our life is but a flash of lightning, yet there's enough time. And they managed to write history. And as Erasmus Desiderius said, the spirit of the union, excuse me, the union of the spirits is more grandiose than the physical union. And their spirits are here to mellow the souls of everyone. That was what happened 50 years ago. And let's watch Cruyff, or rather this is an image of Cruyff, a young child on the shoulders of the Dutch. And he said before he passed that everything has a huge value, but the first achievement is the sweetest of all. Cruyff was a Rudolf Runureyev in our soccer. He could have been amongst us, but unfortunately, life is always staging place, and no one else can do that. This is the Panathinaikos squad of the 11 Greeks. The boy you see there is this young lad. This young man who, even before the game, would say, go, go, fear not. This is the young lad. But of course, there's a huge orchestra there. The incomparable, the inconceivable Ajax of 1971. Here's a picture they marked world football. And this is yet another picture, a photo from the final. So you have the lineup of the two teams. And since we have, are in the presence of this boy next to us, he's not 30 just yet or 32, but he can still do that. See how he celebrated and see how he scored back then. This was possibly the greatest ever squad that uh, the Netherlands gave birth to, and Ajax was one of the top three squads in Europe ever. But these were different times, of course. They were favorites, or rather they were uh, strange hairdos. It's been 50 years already, and Johan is always with us. He's right here. He's next to all of us. That's what happens with all the great guys, Erasmus, Kazantzakis, and Johan, of course. And there you have the banner of the times to remember, to remember that great night when indeed a night that changed the life of everyone, definitely the life of the squad that played the finals. The guys who got there, the Dutch guys who got their first cup, they were worthy that cup. And of course, there was no stop. There was no end. 1971, 72, 73. Let me, let, let me not tie you anymore. This is what happened back at that magical night on the 2nd of June, 1971. No matter how... Many years go by, as long as we breathe, we will always remember this feat. This was the first European Cup for Ajax. This was a great event for Panathinaikos. Remember, it became known outside the borders of our country. A beautiful lady is here. She's Stella to us. Runner Grobacic, uh, Grobacic, uh, Stella, Stella is who you are for us. And after all, Stella is a great movie. You have to watch it. It's an old movie. Stella, starring Melinda Mercuri. So please, tell us. First of all, start by um, 
uh, thanking um, the Foreign Ministry of Greece for uh, making this possible and especially uh, thank you uh, Ms. Minister Dendias for being here with us tonight. It's a great honor and a pleasure on this occasion indeed uh, where we uh, commemorate that uh, exactly 50 years ago this uh, memorable final was played between uh, Ajax and Panathinaikos. Um, I had wanted to uh, put a riddle to uh, Minister Dendias of saying um, endeka FT, uh, endeka uh, kemis, but unfortunately you already gave it away. <laughs> but indeed this was the um, the, the saying of uh, Ferenc Puskas and uh, what I really like about it is, is that what he wanted to show with it and I think this is really something uh, for which we are here tonight is that uh, uh, everything is possible whatever the odds uh, and to me that is really the um, inspiration for this evening an inspiration for all of us also very much in diplomacy uh, everything is possible, whatever the odds. Um, I wouldn't want to repeat uh, many of the things that you already said. Um, I would like to say though that uh, these uh, three consecutive uh, finals that Ajax played are indeed memorable. I should add maybe that uh, I myself being from Amsterdam take particular pride in uh, the fact that we are talking also about Ajax here tonight. It also makes me very happy, of course, that we have the two players uh, of, that, uh, of that match here with us. And uh, we will be hearing also Mr. Ari Haan later on. But let's also not forget that this tie uh, that we want to stress tonight is actually also very much um, symbolized by the fact that today uh, your national team has a Dutch uh, coach, uh, John van het Schip who I had the pleasure of meeting already several times here in Athens. So uh, I'm, I'm really truly uh, happy and grateful that we have this possibility of strengthening the bilateral ties between our two countries, also through soccer, but in many other ways as well. Thank you very much and uh, thank you once again, all of you for being here tonight, be it live or um, through uh, any kind of digital link. <laughs> Thankfully, or maybe fortunately or unfortunately, who knows, we lost Nikos Dendias, who could have been a footballer. He could have possibly had a successful career like Aristides, or maybe he would never have scored. Who knows? But he went into politics and politics won him over and we're keeping our ears open and we are proud to have him as a foreign minister. A few weeks ago, when there was a first meeting between Mr. Vendias and Mr. Tsavusoglu in Turkey, we are not talking politics, this is soccer we're talking about, but back then we were very proud and we smiled at that meeting. We want to be proud. Everybody wants to be proud, the Dutch, the Spaniards, the Germans. We have a Greek foreign minister who makes us proud and makes us want to smile. So let's put politics behind us. It's not always pertinent to everyone and not at all times. So this is a great opportunity to listen to a minister talk about football. It's not easy. It doesn't happen that often, I mean. This is a rare opportunity. Let's relish in it. Thank you very much, says the minister. Allow me to speak on a first name basis. Yes, yes, I'm a young lad. It's just that I'm going bold, but I'm young. So I'm suffering from the same condition, if you will, losing my hair. But on that note, let me extend my thanks to Stella, the ambassador, Mrs. Renner. Thank you very much for this event, but also thank you for your presence, first and foremost. Thank you for your contribution to our bilateral relations. And let me also commend you and congratulate you, Stella, on your new role you will be advisor to the Secretary General for Gender and Diversity. You've been instrumental in women, peace and security. So that's Mrs. Marin Nike as well. I'd like to wish you all the best. Uh, Dear Ambassador, thank you for being here and thank you for everything. And of course, it's a huge pleasure for me to meet with 
Aristides Camaras yet again. It's been quite a while. Without Camaras, we'd, uh, we would have never gone to Wembley. Remember, there was the goal he scored when we were losing 3-0 in Belgrade. There was the goal he scored 3-1, and then we got the 3-0 score in Alexandras. And I was watching that final. I was an intern at the... College of Athens back then. I was watching it on TV. I remember this much. I remember our immeasurable pride vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the FCs in Greece, uh, Olympiakos FC and Ike. They were just still playing home. We were going abroad. This was getting us more opportunities. Yes, we lost. The, we were not bitter about it. Ajax went on to sweep the next two cups and uh, Ajax he changed, they changed football. Yes, they made it to the finals in 74. They made it to Argentina, the final in 78. Ajax changed and overhauled football as such. Panathinaikos, well, if Andonis had scored that goal, if we had a tie one-to-one, -one, yeah, 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 let's put it behind. It just happened. Let's forget about it. And then we had 1983 or 85, 85, you're right, 85. Uh, yes, let's be accurate. Yeah, yeah, I didn't recall the exact date. 1985, that was yet another big moment. I'm really emotional to be here. I'm really happy. And thank you for hosting this event. We're relieving that. And thank you very, very much. We are all very pleased. We are all very happy because, as our teachers used to say, the one who fails to remember their history has no future whatsoever. And this holds true in the case of politics, of soccer, of society, everything for that matter. So it's respect with respect and a lot of... Uh, humility that we remember the past and we bow before the past the past is present here you have a giant a giant who's here with us the minister who apparently was an intern but he was probably cutting classes and i'm sure he was reading other things about soccer instead of his courses he remembered the most important thing about the guy who's sitting on his left he remembered that thanks to this man panathinaikos went to the finals and then there was the crushing defeat of uh, red star four to one was the score that was the worst ever night during that tournament aristides was there aristides was there to give some hope after that 4 to 1 he managed to help us out and that brings us back to Athens there was the revenge Easter 1971 or Easter days if I may put it in such terms we have 2 to 0 Adonis Andoniadis scored twice again it was a tough situation despite these two goals and then Yanis Yakodianis our national sports caster his voice is still vibrant and it's there and he was shaking and he was her growling Aristides Camara see him where he managed to get himself into that was an opening and he made it and yes he scored the goal and that third goal sent Panathinaikos over to Wembley it doesn't really matter whether we lost but uh, uh, Ajax was uh, a memorable team the most important thing was that we were there when history was written and it was made and it was written and made back on the 2nd of June 1971 Aristides Stevies. Good afternoon. Everyone is pleased to see you. A taxi dropped you off and I could see the cab drivers all in front of you. He knew who you were. He showed respect and he could tell what you were doing here. And the taxi guy wouldn't have me pay him. It was a free ride. Yes, he wouldn't get the money, any money from me. There are certain phrases, there are certain sentences that might be trivial. They are ordinary, they are common, and maybe they deprive themselves of their true meaning. But there comes a time or minutes and moments when words and phrases acquire the grand significance of theirs when they are being spelled so authentically and originally and they come from the heart. I am truly and deeply emotional. I'm truly emotional and I mean that to be here. Thank you. I move to be in the presence of uh, Her Excellency, the Ambassador, and my dear friend, if I may call him as such. He's an important statesperson. He's a great minister, but he's also a friend. I'm really emotional to be in your presence. 
Our Minister of Foreign Affairs indeed made us proud, especially over the past few weeks. And he reminded us, that's what a Turkish journalist, a friend of mine told me, he's an old journalist from Turkey, and he told me that this minister reminded us of the fact that the performance of your old sportsmen like Moratti, that's what Evendias reminded us of. Moratti beat the national football team of Turkey at home. And that was back in 1949 and 50. There was yet another important defeat against another national team. I mean, this Turkish sports journalist, who is a friend of mine, drew a parallel, parallel of the performance of our proud Minister of Foreign Affairs and what he did in Turkey. I'm really moved to be here, and I'm truly moved because, you see, there's no exaggeration on my part to state that, well, my memory works, and I'm grateful, and I still recall, and I haven't forgotten, not a single minute for that matter, of what we experienced back in 1971. I can still recall every single minute. Let's not forget about the background and the reality of that time. We're not talking about today when we have huge champions, football clubs that have a mixture of international players coming from every country. Back then, reality was different. We were amateur players. We were all Greek, all of us. This was a purely and clearly Greek team. Even the great Ajax football team had Vasovic, the captain. The captain, he's actually a peer of mine. He's a lawyer. And there was Crow. There were foreigners there as well. We were purely national, if you will. Then there was a huge gap between the amateur soccer of the Balkans, or rather, let me rephrase that, the Yugoslavian soccer was really high up. It was top of the league. But there was a huge gap dividing us and keeping us from the rest of the European football. They were professionals. We were amateurs. Remember what the Times wrote on the day of the match. There was a huge Panathinaikos photo. And then there was a caption, who are these impertinent amateur players that have come from the Balkans and they are here to take the cup from Ajax? I mean, generally speaking, that was the background. But the people were mellow and nice and sweet in their reception. But Panathinaikos was the lucky charm of Ajax, I think. Ajax got the first cup. Unfortunately, they had failed to get the cup the previous year. There was this score 4-1 to one in Madrid. But after this defeat of ours, there was a chain of cups that followed. And as Menos and the minister said, ethos and personality conquered. You see, we managed to show and indeed, Ajax demonstrated a very important level and quality of play and ethics. But that route, that itinerary, and I will beg to differ, or rather, I will not beg to differ with Menos. I mean, right, you talked about Samson and Goliath, David and Goliath, but maybe we made a bad choice. We had forgotten to use what David used against Goliath. Maybe if we had that slingshot, we would have won. We were facing heirs of Telamon. We know what that Trojan hero was. There was another Aeas, Ajax, Ajax, of Locri, but the slingshot was missing, Menos. Maybe we should have brought it along. And let me reverse what you said now. Panathinaikos. Back then, that Panathinaikos was not just one or two single players. It was a fist, a united fist of people standing together. They stood so strong, only Ajax opened up that fist. The rest of them couldn't beat us. And this was a collective venture, and we did it together. Everybody pitched in, and maybe every single one of the players gave more than they could possibly give. And we had a magic key. We had a key that opened everything. Ferenc Puskas was the manager who opened up everything. He took the Petropoulos's Panathinaikos that was ready. We had won the double. We had won championships here. We were well trained. We had practiced a lot, and Puskas on top 
terrified us because Petropoulos was a really tough coach, a tough manager. He was strict. He was austere. Nobody could break that place of discipline. But Puskas came along and Ferenc Puskas gave us this new image and he liberated us and he allowed the talent people to reign free. The first friendly game we gave against Real Madrid, they were the champions at the time. And as the ambassador said, they are 11, we are 11 too. And he actually told us, if you play well, you can beat them. And we had tied the match. And that's what showed things are changing. Something was happening, we could tell. And so that helped us get self-confidence. This world-class old sportsman, Puskas, gave us self-confidence. It was all about him first, and we became his squad. He and this new sense made us more bold at a certain point in time. Eventually, we became more audacious. The good facade of audacity is self-confidence. Arik Khan, I have a question. I have a question for both of you. And eventually, we will give the floor to Aristides again. But please, Mr. Khan, on the 2nd of June, every single year before now, and what about every single June after today? Do you have a special heartbeat? Do you have a special sense? Is there any chance you might wake up on the 2nd of June and you forget about 1971? Mr. Camaras has taken the floor and he says, I will expand your question and I will say that there's a broader sense and I have that feeling and I think this has spread over our careers. We are not just celebrating the 2nd of June, you see. Those of us who are still alive, you see, we are still close. We have close ties. And this goes to show that, indeed, we're very close. And I think we can hear you both, and we can hear no one. So please, Mr. Camaras, let's give the floor to Aris. Ari, 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 sorry, start over. Ari, can you start over, please? First of all, I'd like to uh, greetings to Athens. And Greece is still in my heart, because uh, I was a long time also uh, working in, uh, in Greece. And uh, it was a beautiful time. So I have a very open heart to, to Greece. And the first time we met was, of course, uh, really uh, betting was with Panathinaikos. And uh, it was in 71, 2nd of June. Everybody in Holland is uh, still crazy in the moment and thinking about 50 years ago. Because for Ajax, it was uh, very important. Uh, there was the uh, beginning of the professional football in Holland. Feyenoord, our biggest concurrent, win already. And um, so after the loss from Ajax in, uh, in Madrid against Milan, it was very important to win a game against Panathinaikos. And uh, there was only one thing. We did not know too much about uh, Panathinaikos. Panathinaikos, uh, when you look today, everybody know everything about everybody when there is a game. And that time, okay, we know about uh, Domasos, Antoniades, Lefrakis, and of course Kapsis. We, we know the names, and uh, but we did not know how they play as a team. So it was still a little bit uh, nervous. And uh, that you see also the game, uh, the whole game, it was uh, very difficult also for Ajax. Because the 2 0 was very, very important, but also Palatinaikos had some good chances in that moment. And uh, I remember, especially that day, it was in principle the first day of my career. I, uh, from that day, I was never again out of the first team of Ajax. So the 2nd of June, I scored a goal. I was a very young player. And from that moment on, my career started. So I have a very, very uh, good memories on, uh, on this game. Have you forgotten, Ari? Have you ever forgotten about this date once in your lifetime, maybe, ever? Or have you been remembering that every single year since? That's what I said. It was the beginning of my career, and after that, Ajax uh, was beginning on, 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 on the city in Europe as the best team in the world at that moment and win everything they could win. So there has came so many good and beautiful things afterwards, but always the first one is the most important. That's the start, and you never, never forget it. 
I've been meaning to say that the Netherlands is a beautiful country. We don't have windmills, we don't have tulips and other flowers, but we have great gardens. This is Greece and this is a great garden. Look around you, please. The Netherlands doesn't have the sun shining over us until 9 or 10. I mean, in Corfu, the island of the minister, for instance, see how beautiful it is. But this is, the Netherlands is a country that matches our mentality and it makes us feel great every single time we're there. And I think it's the other way around as well. The Dutch people we meet here in Greece on the islands, they are great guys, they are fun loving, they seem to get along. And all of a sudden there is this tangle with the, f the, the football. Recently, or maybe less recently, we got this Dutch head coach of the Greek national football team. You'd better build a great team, guy. I mean, I hope, I hope, dear head coach, you build a great team. And on that occasion, let's have the videotaped message. 50 years ago, London, Wembley, European Cup for champions, uh, Ajax that won the game 2 nil with goals of Dick van Dijk, a header after a, a cross of Piet Kaiser and Ari Hahn uh, making the second goal after a pass of Cruyff. Um, it was a game that uh, I've seen coming by during the years. At that time I was seven and um, it inspired me. It inspired me to, to dream of becoming a football player, to play together with Cruyff what happened. And also that he later became my coach it was an unbelievable uh, dream coming true. Um, so the influence that that game had only on me, I can imagine, had a lot of influence on so many other people, young players, to follow their dreams and try to become a professional football player. And still now, uh, after 50 years, the connection is there because those moments are uh, our history but of course they will never uh, go away and that's why this game will be special for Panathinaikos and for Ajax for always uh, the first win for Ajax and the first final for Panathinaikos still no other Greek team has played uh, a final in the Champions uh, Champions League final so for both teams it was a big achievement um, being the coach now of the Greek national team makes it even more special for me. Uh, the connection between Greek football and Dutch football. And I'm very honored to be part uh, of this journey. Wish everybody a great day and uh, celebrate this game 50 years ago. See you. That's what happened back then. You see, says Mr. Camaras, there's another important direct connection, a major connection between Greece and the Netherlands. And since this is a great opportunity, we're in the presence of the Ministry of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Hellenic Republic. I would say that it has a strong connection and ties with the Netherlands and especially the European Court, the court, the, the tribunal, the tribunal in The Hague for that matter, the International Tribunal. Let's land to reality now. On top of that, next to Ajax, who paved the way and it wrote history in terms of total football and it changed an overall football for that matter, we have to acknowledge that Ajax and the players of that squad, they provided impetus. They allowed the progress of FIFPRO, the Federation Internationale de Footballer Professionnel. So our our association PSAP in Greek is a member. So this is FIFPRO and the logo. You see, it all started back then. The heart and soul of FIFPRO were the Dutch colleagues of ours and the French. A very important representative and a FIFPRO president was Johan van Rijen who was a Euro MP and a very important member of the Labour Party of the Netherlands. He, when we were holding various congresses here in Greece, he had attended 
many congresses and he'd also met with the Minister of Sports at the time and he'd also been received by the late Konstantinos Karamalis, then President of the Republic. What I'm driving at is this. Ajax and Dutch football have always been ahead of times, along with the tulips. They were always progressive. They were in the avant-garde. Yes, they were always in the avant-garde and they were very gracious. I was fortunate and many of us were fortunate enough to have close ties with our peers in the Netherlands. I was a member of the board of Fifth Pro on a number of occasions. So I was representing the union of the footballers. So I was fortunate enough to be in touch with various peers of mine. I remember this emotional meeting we had, for instance, with Johan Cruyff when he was the manager of Barcelona FC. And he was here playing a game. Milan Barcelona here in Oaxaca. The score, the final score was 4-1. to one. There were many photos. It was an emotional meeting. And I will never forget about the way in which sportscasters from the Netherlands who came here after the 3-0, they had interviews, they made tours, we met, we talked. I mean, I will never forget about the sort of connection we had. There was true connection and communication and everything went well. And there was there was also the expression thereof when, we, when they launched the Amsterdam Arena, when they inaugurated form, formally. The 1971 Ajax squad met with the 1971 Panathinaikos squad and there was the revenge. Remember, Domazo scored a goal and then we lost 3-1 to one because there were successive games. What I'm driving at is that we have strong and unbreakable ties. And let's not forget about the fact that Ajax also graced Salamina with its presence. Yes, Eas Salamina. Yes, on dry soil, no grass. And every time that we come close to this specific date, I remember the faces and I remember the people. I remember how emotional we all were when we played in Amsterdam at a time when three of the great guys had already passed, but their jerseys were there, all three of them. All that we can never forget. It's never possible to forget about such things. Never will we put them behind us. And of course, I believe this was a legacy. This helped establish the presence of Greek football abroad. Greek football that made it to the top in 2004. We had the national men's football team get the cup in 2004, and this was important. I was moved by what Ari Han said. Our paths crossed and so did our interviews at a Berlin radio station meeting five or six days ago. Indeed, Ari Han talked in a very flattering manner about Panathinaikos. Let's not forget about the fact that he knows Greece. He trained Pauk. He was a manager of Pauk. I mean, this was a very important moment, and I will always cherish that day. This jewel we will cherish, we will dust, we will show uh, in our gardens and our balconies every single year. We will celebrate that success. We owe a great thanks to Ari Khan, Aristides, everyone for that matter. Our thanks go to you. We will remember you forever. Rest assured that this privilege in history, history is made, history is written, and it never can be eliminated, nor can it be unwritten. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, all these people will live a joyous, prosperous, long life. We'd like to wish you best of health, be optimistic, and of course, let's never forget about those who have passed. We will treasure them forever. Yes, Aristides. There is an adage, I think Anahas has said, and I quote, all works are good even when the authors die. This is what journalism and sports journalism does for that matter. And since this year we're celebrating the bicentennial of our new, new, new republic, the revolution of 1821, we have to show what we have. Let's not be silent. So we should not let what is a good work be silenced and die. So, Arihan, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, all the best. Have a good evening. All the best to everyone. Thank you, Ari.
βεβαίω τον Αριστερή Καμάρα. Let us also extend our thanks to Aristides Kamaras, who joined us, my dear minister. For a few minutes, we forgot about COVID and Greek and Turkish relations. COVID, after all, is dying away. We are being vaccinated. We are doing things the way we should. Let's have a great summer, everyone. Thank you so much, Stella. It's great here. The garden is beautiful. Maybe I'll see you in 10 years. We'll be the tourists. No, no, next year, says Mr. Camaras. Let's make it next year on the same date. All right, 51 years. Next time. Thank you, guys. We'll take a family photo now. Thank you yet again. This is indelible.